Good morning and welcome back to Building a House from Trees. Thanks for tuning in this week. Um, I'm a bit of all over the place this week. I've got some um, carpentry, some sort of uh, tune-up stuff of the uh, filling in the gaps around the knee braces on the, on the uh, outside wall here. It's a little bit shaky, but it kind of gives you a first person view of uh, what it's like being up on the ladder and kind of filling in the little gaps for air fenestration. And then um, uh, working on getting the rooflet, the awning over the big uh, bump out constructed and installed. Um, then I drop another tree, mill that up into, I think two by fours or something like that. More construction of the rooflet, finish it, um, get that wrapped up, and then um, some blocking up in here and the blocking in the front and uh, the air barrier work involved in that. So uh, anyway, kind of all over the place, just a meat and potatoes, as I say in the video, meat and potatoes sort of uh, sort of week, a lot, a lot done. And um, yeah, it's kind of a little bit of variety. So thank you to all the new subscribers up to 9,000 suddenly. Um, it's 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 kind of wild and uh, all the people watching the videos I, I really appreciate it and all the, the kind comments so thank you very much and I uh, hope you enjoy this week's video and um, got, a, got a more coming got an exciting one either next week or the week after so stay tuned for that all right thanks for tuning in here we go
that. Neat. Patterns.
Where do you want to go for this? There you have it, the, uh, the process of turning a tree into logs. And I think tomorrow's gonna be a day at the sawmill. I haven't done that in a while. I've been kind of gangbusters on all this. And uh, I'm looking forward to, oh, golly, holy moly, this is slippery. Well, who would have thought glare ice? Who would have thought glare ice would be so slippery? But, uh, I think tomorrow's gonna be a sawmill day. I'll have to put spikes on the old logging boots. But time to make some more boards. Actually, specifically, time to make some more two by sixes. Uh, window framing and uh, a couple more walls. But I got a few two by sixes left. But it's that simple. There's a little bit of moss. It's kind of interesting. Hey, moss. So there it is in a nice little stack. Uh, ready for milling. I don't know what we're gonna do with this guy here. This one Pretty wonky. It's hard to tell maybe in the video, but it's got some serious bend in it um, I don't know. I might be able to get some short ones out of it or I don't know, but One two three four Five pretty good nine foot logs nine four or something um, Simple as that though 
to go from uh, to go from that standing tree that I pointed out in uh, this video previously. I finally decided I was going to take it because you know it's a valuable valuable piece of timber there. I can get a bunch of two by sixes, probably the rest of the two by sixes that I need out of this tree. Um, and it's kind of crooked. It wasn't a very marketable, uh, you know, there's a couple decent logs in there, but it wasn't a very marketable uh, um, tree and it was blocking some morning light over there at the, uh, the house from trees. The house from tarps is no more. Boy, what a change. Look, there's a rooflet. Maybe you've seen me build that by now. Maybe you haven't, hopefully. Chronology. Hopefully I've got that figured out by now. But not totally done. Alright. That'll be that for tonight. I'm gonna go inside and clean up and organize a little bit. Pick up some broken wood and some offcuts. Oh look at this pile of hardwood. This is gonna be fun to get into. The cherry. This is a really nice little ash log that was some two ash trees behind the old farmhouse that I took down this morning. And instead of making that into firewood, I think I'll make that into some uh, probably boards. Four quarter, maybe four inch for flooring or something. It's pretty nice. Yeah, we'll see. And then there's that larch. There is that larch. Oh, what's gonna come of you, larch? What's going to come of you? So that was some uh, crappy blocking that I had to do, I had to redo, a little bit of back work, something I'm famous for here. Um, the blocking that I initially did when I put up the rafters back in 17 um, was really solid. I put a lot of screws and nails in them because I didn't know better. And uh, it was also six inches uh, towards the house more than it needed to be because at the time, I thought the walls were going to be logically like within the timber frame, but um, last year my friend Martin, the architect, suggested I do this wall system kind of on the outside, almost like a zip, just completely like an envelope. And as such, the blocking needed to be moved out. So I did that at night the other night with some headlamp miserable work. And uh, what you just saw was me putting up new blocking. And now I'm going to go in and uh, tune, um, tune up all the gaps with this thing right here. Oops, what the hell? Of course that's on film. So yesterday I tried to connect uh, one of these cans here to this gun and the can was cold, it had been down here uh, and it didn't work, it made a terrible mess. I had to take the gun all apart. It was absolutely uh, catastrophic, sort of. Um, so anyway, you gotta keep this stuff warm. 70 degrees is ideal, kitchen temperature. So I'm heading up to fill in the cracks, the little gaps around that uh, new blocking that I put in um, yesterday. So I'll, uh, I'll show you. Okay, well, I don't know if you can see that high up there. Um, I'll take you up there at some point, but I went around with uh, every single seam, even the hairline, um, gaps, any kind of air barrier, and packed it in with this. Stuff's great. And uh, it's just going to expand and lock in, and it's it's really tight. It's fire blocking too, it's fire fire rated, you know, for, for what that's worth. They'll never be fire here, I promise. Anyway, I'm going to fill in some other cracks and gaps in dark and dubious places while I get this thing charged.
So I speed up the process of uh, milling that entire tree here. Uh, I really like the clouds moving through the through the day here. Um, these waves, and it's really nice. I, I don't know. I'm seeing a lot more um, with these time lapses in the sky. But yeah, it's it's two by sixes that I was milling up, and these are all for, like I said earlier, window framing. Um, and I had milled up these really long ones, and I wasn't sure, yeah, the slab pile ever growing. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them. Uh, I milled them at 18 feet, so I sliced them in half, and uh, I've got I've got a good stack of nines. And mostly, I think that's what that's what I had milled up was nine footers. And uh, because these had been sitting outside uncovered, I had to <laughs> drop them. And fortunately, I was able to pick them all up handily. And uh, it's really nice having these all stickered and stacked. They're heavy right now, but uh, these will dry out pretty quickly. Um, I've got them covered now, and once the wind and sun hits them, they'll start drying out. This, uh, working this day, putting the tape up and the, um, the ice and water shield, this is the first kind of, like, nice day, uh, that I've had to work in the sun. Boy, this is a nice spot on a, uh, January day, or February, February day in the sun. It's not even full sun, but, um, this is a warm, warm spot. This window is going to really absorb a lot of heat, and so here's the rooflet. It's, uh, prepared for, um... Well, it's probably going to be like this till spring. It may not. I may get to get in the roof on here, but uh, I'm going to, uh, this is the subfascia. I'm going to have a two inch um, blocking here uh, all the way around. A little bull nose kind of thing in, in plane with this, coplanar to this subfascia. And then there'll be two inch rigid foam on top of this. Strapping, you know, half inch or probably inch strapping. And then the, um, then the roofing. A little length of roofing all the way across. And, uh, you know, flashing and all that stuff that, that I'm supposed to have. So it should be good. Um, it, it will be good. It's, it's going to be a bomber little roof that really it's completely under another roof, literally completely under another roof. So it's, it's overkill, but uh, it's way better to overkill than underkill. You don't want to have water dripping in, in the house or into the insulation package. And it's part of the envelope, so it's got to be nice and tight. Um, but I think I'm going to do black. And then eventually down the road, at some point here, I'm going to have probably a bank of solar panels right here uh, to offset that, uh, that power cost. Not that there's going to be much, but frugal Friday, right? Well, I got some more wiring done here, uh, a little, just a little bit for the basement. I'm going to start working on the stairs, I think, over here pretty soon. And it'll just be a lot easier and nicer to have light down here. Been meaning to for a while, so. And that's something, huh? Crazy. It's fun stuff, electric. Fun stuff. Okay, another one of these, uh, just got to get it done kind of miserable projects but i guess i'll film it and show you guys uh, this is the meat and potatoes uh, of a tight envelope so this is the north side of the house in the dry storage the uh, above the portico the second story loft here um, and that's a that framed in wall so where this wall comes out uh, where this wall terminates and meets the roof this is where the two uh, rafters are sistered together i'm getting blocking 
uh, nailed up into this space, just like I did on the front of the house. So I'm gonna have a continuous uh, plane going up this wall up into the ceiling. And I'm gonna fill these gaps with the uh, off cuts of the uh, little scraps here. So, and then I'll spray foam nice and tight around every one of these gaps. So that's what I'm working on now. So this, this is filling in all the blocking, stopping everything. The wall out here is going to be going right up to, up to there. So this is all buried and uh, this will all be buried and sealed away. So, but this just prevents any air from escaping and rodents from going through. Those are all quite tight, but I figured can't hurt. Put that in and that stuff becomes rock solid. So it's, it's really, it's great stuff. Thanks for tuning in this week, and uh, we'll see you next week.